Hey, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about child sexual abuse. So child sexual abuse can be raping the child, forcing the child to perform oral sex on an adult, touching a child inappropriately in the genital areas, exposing a child to uh, sexual videos, photos, exposing them to any type of porn. A lot of this information I get just from working with children who've been abused and also from the site RAIN, R-A-I-N-N dot -N org. So some warning signs, I'm going to talk about that too. Uh, but before I get there, trust your instincts. If you have a child or you're a caregiver, if you think somebody does not sit right with you, with your child, you get this creepy vibe. Your child is saying, I don't feel comfortable around this person. Don't make me go around that person. Trust those instincts that you have. But some physical things you can look out for if your child happens to get an, um, an STI, a sexually transmitted um, infection, you definitely know that something's wrong there. Also, um, bleeding in the genital area. If you're noticing blood on your child's clothes, blood also on the sheets, you know, underwear, and this is all unexpected, unexpected bleeding. Like they didn't injure their privates on the bike or playing outside or at some type of football game. You know, um, Child sexual abuse can also happen to boys. I, I know there was a time I was growing up that I would hear people say that, oh, you got to watch your girls, got to watch your girls, keep them safe. But hey, you also got to watch your boys, so let's keep our boys and our girls safe. Uh, some other things to keep an eye on is especially, this is a big one, sudden changes in the child's behavior. You know, like one moment you can have a, um, a child that um, really good per personality, um, and then all of a sudden, they may, the, the emotions start to change where they're now very aggressive, um, mean. There can be um, decrease in the confidence. You know, they were confident with dance in front of people, seeing, have fun, but now th that confidence is gone. Um, unexplained health conditions. You know, at first they weren't complaining about being sick. You take them to the doctor, you know, they can't find anything wrong with them, but your child keeps complaining about stomach aches, headaches. Also, you'll see um, maybe they um, have a loss or decrease of interest in school, whereas before they really liked school, being around the teachers, uh, other students at the school, but now that's gone. You're, you're getting a sudden change in like their sleeping habits where now they're getting more nightmares, uh, just fear of being left alone at night and self-harm behaviors, maybe cutting themselves, um, making themselves bleed, pulling out their hair, things of that nature. That's more emotional, but back to the um, the physical. I jumped around, oops. Uh, the uh, physical things, not wanting to be left alone with certain people. And this is like different, whereas first they were okay with being left around certain people, you would leave them around. But now they um, are very clingy all of a sudden to the uh, mom or dad or whoever the caregiver is. You also may notice some regressive behaviors. And I just want to say the child that's been sexually abused may not have all of these symptoms that I'm seeing, but these are things that you just want to be on a lookout for. So regressive behaviors, maybe they stop sucking their thumb, but now all of a sudden they sucking their thumb all the time. Or they were already totally trained, but even their bed wetting, and this can even be for um, older kids. Uh, inappropriate sexual behaviors, for instance, you take little um, Timmy to go play with some other kids, and then he got his penis out, and he humping on all the little girls and boys, and you're like, well, what? Timmy, I didn't teach you that at home. That can be a red flag, you know, that something is going on, uh, because I see that a lot, um, working with kids in, in therapy their parents are saying well i was i took um little timmy to go play and now all of a sudden he's tongue kissing and um masturbating other kids you know those are signs because um it's sad to say but when people have been victimized their chances of victimizing others becomes higher so now they um a perpetrator did something horrible to them and that person who was victim um can become the perpetrator, can become, um, yeah, the perpetrator. And so you'll see that kind of behavior. And also just a lot of knowledge about um, sex. You know, whereas they weren't talking about sex before, you didn't even know they, they knew what sex was because they didn't when you would even try to talk 
mention anything but now all of a sudden they know all about sex they you you know and you're like what happened and who are you and where did my little Timmy go you're gonna notice that behavior also um some signs that adult may be hurting the child and all these if somebody displays maybe um some of these symptoms it doesn't necessarily mean that they're um a perpetrator but these are again some things just to be aware of that could be considered red flags again trust yourself if you're not feeling comfortable around certain people if your kids aren't feeling comfortable around certain people um and it can be hard to detect these signs because usually uh, these the people who um the perpetrators are people that you know and trust typically and then also people that your kids know and trust these can be pastors family members it could also be the parent it can be a caregiver a foster um foster parent it can also be a teacher a principal i think i said um re religious um people your priest it could be a pastor an elder at the church one of the mothers one of the saints at the church so some things um signs that an adult may be hurting the child so doesn't respect boundaries you just notice that this is a person that can never hear the word no this is a person that i wouldn't want around me or i wouldn't want around a kid as well because they they don't respect no also engages in touch that a child or a parent says is un um, unwanted for instance if you're telling them hey i don't want you to um be rocking little quenisha on your knee and then you turn around they're rocking quenisha on the knee you're like didn't we just talk about that that's also a boundary and um engaging in inappropriate touch or if kanisha tells um a, a, a teacher she doesn't like the teacher stroking her face and the person just keeps stroking the face anyway that's like be, not being respectful of a person's body and i just want to add this in it's too um for parents and of course it's your your child do what you want but I, I think we should really consider that if a kid doesn't want to hug someone, doesn't want to kiss someone, even if it's a family member, that that should be okay. Because when we're telling the kid that it's okay, you don't have to kiss grandma or auntie, it's letting them know that they have a say-so about their body, that it's okay to say no. I know um, growing around certain uh, family members, I, I have someone who would like, do her mouth but this person she it wasn't a sexual thing this person um had a mental illness and so before she kissed me she would do this <laughs> and, and, and i was like oh my god and i would have to kiss that person and i was like oh god you know and it made ugh. so even as an adult that still freaks me out so it's like Try to respect the kid's boundary. And now I got to, like, get some tissue because that was just too much. And now it's too much slop. Oh, okay. There, was, whew, there we go. So, yeah, just respecting that boundary. You know, how can we say kids, like, oh, you know, good touch and bad touch. But then every time they're around a the family member, you making them kiss somebody. What I mean, how are they supposed to be able to try to stand up for themselves and say, no, um, get your hand out my privates? That's just my take on that. Do what you want. You're a kid. All right. So the adult tries to be a child's friend rather than um, playing an adult role. That's a sign you can look out for. Not necessarily that this person is a um, perpetrator, but still be um, j just be mindful. Um, doesn't seem to have age-appropriate relationships. They all know only friends with kids and teenagers they don't have any adult friends um spends times with kids outside of their role in the kid's life for instance a coach may be um trying to take your kid out to other places and it's like it has nothing to do with coaching you know no other adults with the um, coaching team are there and just trying to spend all this extra time with your kid um this adult may be giving your kids gifts for no reason at all your kid is coming home with unexplained money new jordans and you're like where are you getting this stuff from also you want to be able to look out um be careful around somebody and i don't want to um i guess it's the word stigmatize everyone that's been to prison because of course this doesn't apply to everyone that's been in prison but i'm sure as we know that um there is a lot of incidents of men who are being raped in prison and it's something that that people don't talk a lot about and I was learning more about this. If you haven't checked out this guy on YouTube, um, his name is Pharaoh Said That. 
So Pharaoh, I believe P H A R A O H S A I D S A I D that T H A T. And he talks about a lot of different things that he was talking about, the whole R. Kelly thing, and also mentioned men being raped in prison. And, you know, and a lot of times those that's been raped, been abused, turn, then they in turn become the perpetrators. Why it works like that, I don't know, but it happens a lot in our society. So you just want to be careful, especially if you have these um, people, You you um, if you're a woman, and you met you met your boo in jail and y'all been pen pals for 10 years he been in jail and then he get out and then you got him around quenisha and little bobby and he been in there getting um raped for 10 years he went in straight came out still um saying he's straight but he been raped for years and so now he a perpetrator and you got him around little quenisha and bobby you just want to be safe of course that does not apply to everybody that's been in prison but these are things that does happen and you may see my notes yes i have them um as far as some things that you can do for prevention teach your kids boundaries how to say no when it's okay to speak up sometimes people tell them everything an adult tells you you got to do it well does that mean they need to bend over and get some oral sex too no it doesn't so maybe let's just be clear hey you know teaching them it's okay to um, obey reasonable requests. But when you're talking about the private parts and doing things like that, it is uh, not okay. And they should know when to speak up and tell an adult no. Also, pay attention when kids don't like or want to be around someone, even family members, like I said before. Believe them. This is a big thing. I've worked with so many people and for whatever reason, not believing the kids when they say, oh, are they just making up things? Do they just want attention? One of my kids was abused. So now the other one is saying she's abused. Does she just really want attention or is she just, you know, you know, and, and a, a lot of abusers say, I mean, a lot of survivors say that's the worst thing ever to actually come out and say they've been abused and to have a parent to say, are you telling the truth? Are you lying? Why did you wait so late? The reason why kids don't tell is because shame. It's embarrassing for them to come out to say, hey, you know, you told me good and bad touch, but somebody did that bad thing to me. It's embarrassing. Um, there's also fear. The perpetrator can say that they're going to kill the kid, harm the kid, harm the kid's family or caregivers if they tell. And then, um, you know, just being smaller than the abuser, of course, they're going to be scared and have that fear. Self-blame. A kid, they don't always understand that if somebody else did something bad to them, they're thinking, wow, it must be me. Maybe I did something. Why would this person who I loved and trust, grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, the priest, the pastor, teacher, principal, why would they do this, you know? You know, it must be me, you know. Also, admiration for whoever that they, um, who abused them. Like, if it's their pastor, they may always hear mom say how, and dad say how great pastor is. And maybe they used to admire your pastor. Now, the person who, um, admire, who they admired is actually victimized them. That's hard for somebody to process. Even adults can't wrap their head around it. So, we can't expect kids to wrap their heads around it. And so a lot of times kids don't even tell that they've been abused. You know how people find out? Either the parent walked in, the caregiver saw it or heard something, and that's how they found out. Uh, but usually kids, when they finally get bolder to speak about it, they don't go to an adult. They go to another kid because they feel that they can be better understood by a kid. And the kid they tell usually ends up telling an adult, and that's how the adults get involved. So people will say, well, why didn't they tell sooner? Of course, because of shame, fear, self-blame, admiration for the person um, who was raping them. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So it's normal that they'll even tell um, when they get to be an adult. Some solutions that we can do, um, getting the perpetrator far away from the kids. If they're living with you, getting them out of your house as soon as possible. Believe in the kid. Calling 911. If you're a concerned friend, family member, you don't live in a house with a kid that's getting abused, even if it's neglect, they're not eating, they're not being bathed, anything like that, even with the rape molestation, if you suspect it, you can call Child Protective Services and leave um, an, um, an anonymous tip, and they'll go out and um, investigate that. You can also... Um, 
for parents and caregivers fingerprint when you go into the daycare. Um, may, I mean, ask if they fingerprint their workers at the daycare, you know, and even if they do, you know, I hate to be negative, but you, sometimes you just don't know. But what I would also caution is not sending the kids to everybody's house because an abuser is not going to have an abuser tattoo across their head. They're not going to wear a shirt that says, I'm a perpetrator on the back, watch your kids, you know, cover their privates. It's not going to happen like that. So, I mean, unfortunately, I think we're just living in a time where you got to keep your kids you know, to you as much as possible. And when you have to send them out, because of course you're going to have to send them out to schools and daycares, is teaching them how to um, speak up, but also realizing that it's going to be more on you, the parent, to recognize signs. Because as I said, it's very seldom that kids will speak up. So it's going to take the parent to recognize these signs. Before I go on, I do not want to, I, I want to say before I forget, if you have not gotten my books, these are fiction books. They are on Amazon. You can get them on ebook. I should have worn a curtain by Samira Alexander. This is um, a novella. It's book one. And I also released book two this week, which is also a novella. I should have worn a curtain, a novella. This is part two. Again, Samira Alexander available on ebook and also paperback see how pretty these are don't you want to get them and add them to your collection yes you do on amazon on uh amazon also if you're um in america because i know it could possibly a little easier to ship you can send me an email and i'll let you know how to get um a signed copy if you're in the u.s and also if you want um, a private consultation with me you can also look below in the or in the about section or below in this video and it'll let you know I specialize in dealing with adults who um, suffer from trauma um, as children and even as teenagers and that's trying to deal with the PTSD anxiety depression and all those things that come along with um, suffering from child child abuse neglect and um, adult abuse as well. So you can get um, a session with me. And also, long-term effects of child sexual abuse. Yes, it doesn't just end in childhood. You know, I wish it did, but sexual problems, they can become perpetrators. People don't want to talk about that. Even like, um, like I said, what Farrell said, that he made a good point about R. Kelly. You know, people want to keep it shh hush that that man was also um abused himself and i'm not saying it makes it right um for someone who's been sexually abused to become a perpetrator i do believe that they should shouldn't be around people um the population so that it can the abuse can stop but we also want to um make sure that everybody who's abused people are held accountable because it's because the victim also will become the perpetrator and should that person who um, perpetra perpetrated against him go free? No, everybody should be held accountable. So also, yeah, so that's what happens. Um, the person who was the victim can become the victimizer, and that happens a lot. Also, um, long-term effects, body image issues and anxiety, trouble with their body, with their sexuality, not feeling comfortable in their own body, their own skins. They can become violent, become, um, you know, engage in crimes, become criminals. Substance abuse, that's the big issues a lot of times we're like, why, why is this person on drugs? And, you know, they had every opportunity, it seemed. Or, why, why are they on this and why on that, on that? Well, they're using it to cope, you know? Dealing with this trauma is not easy. Even a lot of times getting therapy could be helpful, but not always. It can't help everybody, depending on how long a person has been um, abused. You know, sometimes that stuff just stays with them, and no amount of therapy you're going to get is going to be able to help. So, yeah, a person needs a way to cope. Maybe they try some positive ways to cope, talking to a friend, talking to a therapist, going for a walk, getting a massage, but that's not going to help everything. So some people are using drug abuse, I mean, uh, substance abuse. And sometimes we as adults and in family, we um, sweep it under the rug. We don't report people. We don't make them be accountable. And then we tell people, oh, no, nothing happened to you. Yo, you should have said something early. Then we wonder why they strung out on, on different um, opioids and on all kind of having, um, why they're alcoholics. Well, they were abused, you know, and nobody did anything about it. There's also the guilt and shame, low self-esteem these people deal with, um, even as adults. 
um, once they suffer child abuse. Depression, suicide, and um, not everyone has all these symptoms, but they, I'm sure, have a lot of them. Uh, the PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, what is that? Can include the nightmares, flashbacks, constantly thinking about the abuse or trauma they suffer. Um, me, all those memories about the abuse, avoiding different places where the, the abuse happened, avoiding conversations about the abuse. Um, also, um, maybe just, yeah. So the anxiety, they um, don't really trust other people because something bad happened to them that shouldn't have happened. They weren't doing anything and this horrible thing happened to them. So it's hard to wrap their minds around it. A negative worldview, like thinking nothing positive coming to the, to the world. Everything sucks. Everyone sucks. Sleep problems, problems concentrating, anger, hatred, even health problems uh, as, an, uh, as an adult. Uh, unexplained health problems, you know? And so the reason I wanted to bring this up again, like I said, the guy um, who did the video talking about R. Kelly is because this is a big thing. It's not just a black thing. It's not a white, white, not just a white thing, not just a Latino thing, an Asian thing. This is something that happens to a lot of people. I work mainly with uh, Hispanic populations right now. And I used to think, oh, just in the black community, there was a lot of rape or incest, you know, going on or trauma that wasn't addressed. And I see it a lot too in the Hispanic population that I'm working with here in the Los Angeles County. So I say, because of all these long-term effects that we have to start dealing with this, knowing the signs you cannot, again, cannot expect the kids to be the one to speak up. A lot of studies show that they don't, they seldom speak up. So it's gonna take the adult to realize what's going on and to deal with this kind of stuff. And I think it's strange when people grow up and they're molesting other people. You know, we're like, what's wrong with this person? Oh, they're just a pervert. Why are they doing this with kids and stuff? Well, what happened to that person? Who abused that other person? Was that person ever prosecuted? You know, what's going on? Let's go back and, and look to see where did all this stuff come from, you know? Is this a, re a, a, a result of people being um, raped and abused from years and years, slavery on up? in other cultures for whatever reason that people are not addressing these things. So I know it's taboo. A lot of people don't want to touch it, but we have to touch it because if we don't, it's just going to continue to go on and on and repeat in the cycle. The person that's been raped as a child growing up, a lot of times abusing other people, then that person got abused is doing it over and over again. So if somebody doesn't address it and we don't start healing from this, we have to. It's, I know with parents, they can get to the point where they feel shame, like, oh, I should have known. How did I not see this? And I know that, you know, I understand that that can be a hard place to be. But even though you didn't see it, you know, still, the th I think the thing that you can do is move forward by reporting it. You know, a lot of times people will go to other family members saying, this is what happened and I didn't report it yet. What do you think, you know? But the thing is, call 911 as soon as possible. You see the bleeding in your child's underwear, take that person to the police. I mean, make, go to the police, go get a physical, take them to the doctor to see the, the pediatrician. And again, trust your instincts around people. Sometimes you get it in your gut. And I know women, I know a lot of times women do it. Of course, I'm not a man, can't speak for them. But a lot of times you know it's something that's not feeling right. So let's protect the kids. Thank you.